Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now my time with the Ducati Multistrada V4S is coming to an end, so I just want to do a proper review of it with better sound quality than my first impressions video, which won't be hard, let's be honest. So yeah, I'm gonna answer the big questions such as, is it any good? And is it better, in my opinion, than a BMW R1250 GS? Which would I buy with my own money? Which in the future, I guess I actually might do. Yes, hello, welcome back. So I've spent a week and a half with this new Ducati Multistrada V4S and I've ridden it in sub-zero conditions. I've ridden it in blizzards. I've ridden it in the rain today and I've uh, covered it in salt. So sorry about that, Ducati UK. And to be honest, I've been blown away by it and I'm gonna go into detail about why in every section of the bike, but let's just talk about what it is first. Obviously, it's the new Multistrada. The Multistrada really came into its own in 2010 when it finally wasn't beaten by the hideously ugly stick and it kind of defined that whole superbike on stilts category it was refined further in 2013 i bought one and it was amazing it was aggressive the engine the chassis it felt like a proper hooligan machine uh, until i sold it and it broke down on the day i sold it and cost me a thousand pounds but whatever and then slowly it's matured and got a bit softer i think it's lost some of its edge in the engine department and the handling department as it got dvt things like that it just got a bit softer which is i guess what adventure bike people want but I want an aggressive hooligan machine that can also tour. And that's kind of where this comes in. It's a lot more aggressive in the engine department. And uh, yeah, I've been having a ball. So I'm gonna take you around it, do a bit of a walk around, take you for a ride and find out exactly why I think it's gonna be one of the best bikes of the year. Spoiler. Right, let's talk about the looks just for a second. When I first saw pictures of this, which was unveiled in November of 2020, I kind of thought, oh God, no, this, this here, that's the radar dish for the adaptive cruise control and the blind spot warning. Actually in person, you don't really notice it. I've got used to it. I wish the beak was a bit pointier and I wish you could get it in carbon fiber, like in the very first Multistradas. Well, I say the first ones, the 2010 ones, um, but you can't. This one's got carbon fiber front mud guard and your Kraftovich silencer on it as well, which is just a slip on. And I think it looks nice. I don't think it's an ugly bike at all. I certainly think it's a lot more interesting to look at than the GS, so it is caked in filth. Right, let's look at the side and then the back and then we'll probably come back here. Sorry, this is a bit disjointed. Now, obviously the V4 lump is very loosely based on the one in Panigale and the Street Fighter V4, which are famous for being hotter than the sun. So obviously this is a touring mode, Cycle Ducati have put lots of vents in it. So these actually all draw air away from the radiator and they're angled away from your legs. And this one here as well takes air in through the front and diverts it away from you. You've got big scoops down here, which aren't wings, I don't think. They look like the wings on a Street Fighter, but I think, to be honest, they're probably more for shooting cold air up at you. So basically, hot air away from you, cold air at you. It's quite clever, and it looks like the side of a shark. Now, the back end of a motorbike is not usually the most interesting thing to look at, but there's a few surprises here. It's got a double-sided swing arm, which we don't normally see on the big Multistradas. The number plate light is off to the side and it's got another radar dish under here for the blind spots when cars coming up behind you you know right before we get stuck into the really really sexy stuff let's just stop and talk briefly about the chassis the Mallstrada v4s gets a new aluminium monocoque it gets a 19 inch front wheel not a 17 inch one and it's got obviously the double-sided swing arm as we talked about this one because it's the v4s has electronic and active ducati skyhook suspension so it's kind of the same technology that they've been using for the past eight years or so, but this is obviously the latest version of it. And you've got 170 mil of wheel travel at the front, 180 at the back. So they basically tried to make it a little bit more off-road friendly than the old one, especially with that front wheel, which you can't feel on the road. It might as well just have a 17 inch front wheel. Don't go worrying about the fact that it's got a bigger front wheel. You can't really feel it when you're riding like a twat. Now, obviously all this tech on the Multistrada V4 is gonna add quite a bit of weight to it. And it is a 215 kilogram bike, dry, without any fluids or anything. And actually it feels quite light when you're riding it around. I rode my mate's 950S Multistrada and this felt there or thereabouts the same. Now, obviously I'm six foot three, I'm quite tall. So I notice the weight less when I'm paddling bikes about. Obviously I've got thighs of steel or something, mostly Terry's chocolate orange pieces. Um, but yeah, it's not that bad, but obviously, do go and sit on one if you're planning on buying one. 
Now the thing you're probably most interested in is this, 66.7 kilograms of pure Italian V4. So yeah, 170 horsepower, 10,500 RPM, which isn't exactly stratospheric. 10,500 RPM, is it? That's it, rev limit, bang, change up a gear. At that point, you're probably doing a little wheelie, but we'll get onto that. And 125 newton meters of torque, 8,750 RPM, which again, sounds quite high coming from the L twin, but this has got loads of mid-range shove, like loads and loads of mid-range shove. So don't go worrying about that. This feels faster than the old one. What else can I say about it, really? It sounds nice. This Akrakovich slip-on behind me does, as far as I can tell, precisely nothing for the sound. So I wouldn't bother unless you like the way it looks and it probably saves like half a kilo or something like that. It's still road legal. Now, all this talk of horsepower and everything is all well and good. Obviously, this is gonna go down history as one of the first Ducati engines in recent history to not use desmodromic valves. It's just got normal springs to actuate the valves. And uh, that makes it, they say more reliable, but it puts the valve check service out to 37,000 miles. I used to have to do one every year on my old 1198. It's ridiculous. Oil change is about 9,000 miles. You'll probably just do one of those a year. But the good news is, if you're not gonna do 15,000 miles, you never have to pay for what's apparently a 500 quid-ish valve service. But in my experience, has always been four figures. That's good news, isn't it? Embarrassingly, my big tripod has broken, so I'm gonna to have to show you the electronics like this. There's a button down there that you use to turn it on, much like a GS with keyless. Obviously, this has got keyless ignition as well. You get a lovely screen. This has got a six-axis IMU, which gives you cornering traction control, cornering ABS, everything, basically. An up and down quick shifter, it's all there. You've got two screens. You've got an upper one and a lower one, and there's a little joystick to the left, and you simply hold that down to go down to the lower screen, and there's all your trips and everything. You can reset them, and then you can hold up, and you go back to the top. So you've got your settings, the Ducati Connect, which is the app which you can download on your phone. And I've tried it and uh, it didn't work. Right, Ducati Connect is an interesting one. Basically, you Bluetooth your phone to the bike and then the bike has a Wi-Fi hotspot which connects to your phone. And it asks you like that, do you want to connect to the bike? And you click yes. And then you open the Ducati Connect app, which is all very exciting when it works. There we go. So you can see that's gone white so I can use it. And then I can access my music, my contacts and my phone and something called SatNav. <laughs> you have to download an app called Sigic, S-Y-G-I-C on your phone. And I've done that. And no matter what I do, I can't get it to work. It launches the app on my phone, but it then says, please check your phone, there might be a connection problem. So I can't test that. I tried. Another thing to point out is that if you do use the Ducati Connect app, you then can't, let me just go through, the music thing, you have to have on an iPhone, Apple Music. You can't use Spotify. So yeah, I've not used any of that. You can just connect with Bluetooth and use it for basic sending music to your helmet and all that kind of stuff. But there we go. You've got an adaptive cruise control menu to set the distance to the car, that's all standard stuff, as if you're in a car, and heated seat. Uh, the high setting on the heated seat is too hot, even when it's zero degrees, you'll burn whatever genitals you have. There's a lap timer because it's a sporty bike, and in the settings, you've got, oh my God, so much stuff. You can change the brightness of the blind spot detection. You can do all sorts of things. There we go don't want to wang on too long but it's all there and the riding modes are accessed using a button on the left handlebar sport touring enduro urban and you can customize them to your heart's content i've just left it in sport mode one quite cool feature on the multistrada v4s and that is this little hidey hole here which you can use to hold the key or if you don't want to do that and want the key in your pocket there's a usb port just there and you can plug your phone in however if you have a massive massive phone like i do i've got an iphone 12 pro max if it's in a leather case it will go in but it's really hard to get out again i can take out the case and it fits in okay but if you've got even a thin case i've got the apple leather one it's a bit of a pain but hey it's nice to have something like that just don't do what i do and put the key in there then walk off and leave the key in the bike because that is a bit silly and probably does your insurance in Okay, while I'm here, I might as well give you a quick overview of the left-hand switch gear. It looks like a lot, but it's all dead easy to use. 
basically you've got your cruise control here. I think this plus and minus is probably for audio volume when you've got stuff set up. That is to set your preload between rider, rider and luggage and all of that stuff. And then riding mode button, your joystick here, your horn, and that's pretty much it. I would say the heated grip button is over here. It's quite hard to get to. And you might think, oh, just press that a couple of times. No, pressing it just brings up that menu. Then you've got to use your left hand to choose how hot they are. So it's a bit of a faff, bit of a faff. The blind spot warning system works by lighting these up orange. You can adjust how bright they get. There's one on each mirror. And if you've ever had it in a car, hello, it's exactly the same as that, except probably more in focus. While we're doing the cockpit, it's worth pointing out that the screen operation is so easy, you can literally do it with one finger. I probably do it with my little finger. Oh, it's so easy to do. It's brilliant. I would say that's the best screen operation on any bike. And you can leave it halfway up. And it has got little notches in it. So yeah, really good screen. And I don't get any buffeting off it, which is unusual for me because I'm six foot three and I usually get deafened by them. Right, enough. Let's go and ride it. Do, do, do. You've still got to use the physical key to open the fuel cap. And let's stick some juice in it. Or not. Now, on the topic of fuel consumption, this is a relatively thirsty bike. The best I've got out of it is about 42 mpg on a run. But if you hammer it, it goes down to 35 pretty quickly. Despite that, you'll still get 180 miles out of it, so it reckons, on a tank, and that's about right. That's kind of what I've been getting. So, I mean, you could argue that a GSA can go for 300 miles, but if you do 300 miles in one go, get a GSA, don't get something as sporty as this. That's basically what I would say. Look at it go, magnificent thing. The slow speeds like this, the V4, has a huge advantage over the old L-Twin because it just doesn't get lumpy, or certainly not as quickly. If I was doing 17 miles an hour like this, I'd probably be in first gear slipping the clutch on the old 1260. This just, oh, you can one hand pootle along. It's dead easy to ride and it's dead smooth. And that V4 makes a big difference to that. In a second, we'll get on some faster bits. And you're just gonna sit there, excellent. Hey, people doing U-turns. <laughs> so yeah, filtering on it, apart from the width, is actually really easy. I imagine in summer, it might get a bit hot, but as we said, there's lots of vents to try and mitigate that. And it's mostly been zero degrees while I've been riding this, so it's been all right. People aren't used to seeing motorbikes at this time of year, are they? It's the middle of February. Come on. Oh, that's cool. Like the Panigale V4 and the Street Fighter V4, the Maldestrada V4 switches off its rear bank of cylinders when you're at idle, when you're at traffic lights, when you're at a stop, basically, to cut down on some of that heat and to use a bit less fuel, you only notice it working because the sound changes. It goes from quite a deep rumble to quite a thin rumble. No, not a rumble, just quite a thin noise. And then when you move the throttle at all, it kicks the back cylinders back into life and the noise changes. It's clever stuff. I don't notice it, but I imagine it does make a big difference to the heat when it's summer. All right, greasy roundabout. Ha, da, 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 da. Okay, 30 miles now, 50 miles now, how much power has it got? Yeah, <laughs> enough for me to be slightly concerned about the greasy road conditions. I've ridden this bike mostly in the dry of the 200 miles that I've done it, and I've never really seen the traction control kick in, just the anti-wheelie. It finds a load of grip, and you can ride it really, really sportily, and yeah, don't go thinking that that 19 inch front wheel makes the handling all boaty. It does nothing of the sort. If you didn't know this had a 19 inch front wheel, you would swear it just had a normal 17 on the front. It tips in really quickly. Um, steering is super quick. Yes, it still feels stable in fast sweeping corners. 
and that's kind of what I think the Multistrada is all about really the GS you know it's always been a it's nimble and more nimble than you'd think but it's never been especially sporty the Multistrada always used to be quite edgy quite flighty and quite fun and like a sp super bike on stilts it kind of got softened off and I think this is still a little bit soft but I'd say it's got more of a sporty edge than the, the DVT1260 had. Just in terms of feeling like a hooligan bike, the elbows out, and the fact that the front pops up at the top of second gear, third gear, anytime you're giving it something in sports mode, you see beautiful, gentle, tiny, tiny wheelies, where the front just hovers above the ground. It makes it a much more interesting bike to ride than a GS, and I love the GS. I'm not a GS basher. I just think this, engages me a lot more in the riding experience yet in comfort mode the skyhook suspension it is so plus i would say it doesn't iron out as many of the tiny bumps as the gs's fancy telelever whatever it is set up but it does a bloody good job of smoothing things out so it is very sporty it is very comfortable i would say it's got a broader range of sportiness and comfort than the gs flicking between the modes it feels like a multi-tool and that's the whole point is it multi-strada mini roads obviously i'm not taking this off-road just because this is one of the first bikes in the country and i'm a bit shit off-road and i don't want to drop it and bend it because that'd just be embarrassing so go and check out zach courts or someone like that for an off-roading review and yeah it's a sublime bike to ride i just wish we could do big trips now go to europe on it because this has gone straight to the top of my list of bikes that I want to do touring on. Actually, it's gone straight to the top of my bikes for many things. Local blasts, you can have a lot of fun on this. You get into a lot of trouble on this bike. It does just tick so many boxes. So yeah, it is very good. Very, very good. And there's my blind spot system. It's still properly, properly fast. Right, one thing loads of you have been asking me about is the cruise control. It works just like the cruise control on any other Ducati. You hit the on button and then you hit, he says, the set button. And that's it. And then you can adjust the speed up and down. That's interesting. Why is it slowing it down? Aha! Right. So yeah, the cruise control, you just hit on, then set. This bike has got sticky switch gear. So the set button, which also decreases the speed, sticks in. So as soon as you set it, it starts decreasing the speed, which isn't great, but I managed to find a way around that. So yeah, I've got adaptive cruise on. It just feels like normal cruise control until you come up behind another car, and then it slows down gradually. I've never had it do any violent, abrupt changes of speed. I've never had it kind of scare me. It just does seem to work. I know there are loads of cynics out there, but I mean, it's up to your own personal level of techie acceptance, isn't it? If you're okay with it in a car, you'll be okay with it on this. The brakes aren't actually that sharp. I'd say considering this has got Stylema calipers, I think it's got quite a soft pad count compound or quite a gentle pad compound because you have to pull the lever quite hard to get any significant bite. And that's it's fine. It doesn't make it hard to stop or anything like that. It's just a mindset thing. It goes so quickly, you just have to squeeze it hard when you think to stop it, which gives the bike an impression of weight, which you don't really notice. Certainly not in the corners. You don't notice that weight. It's just... That is the little brain impression you get from the brake pads. What a lovely day. Tesco lorries doing three pointers in the road. Anyway, back to you, Tim. Fair outro. So in conclusion, the Ducati Multistrada V4S, is it the second coming? It's pretty close, to be honest, annoyingly. All that hype is warranted. It's a really, really, really bloody good bike. The only flaws I can really find are the fuel economy, not great 35 mpg when you're hooning it around 40 ish when you're not you can probably get it 45 on a long run with cruise control on and your feet up smoking a big cigar but how often are you going to be doing that 
Anyway, you still get 180 mile tank range there or thereabouts. What other negatives? Uh, the exhaust is very quiet, even that a crap pitch one. All the noise comes through the airbox, but it's a beautiful noise. The heated grip button is a bit of a faff, and some of the UX stuff on the menus can sometimes get a little bit annoying holding that joystick left. Sometimes it doesn't register, and the switch gear on the spike has been a little bit sticky. But hey, that's probably Michael Neves. He had this before me. I've heard he uses a lot of lotion. No, I'm joking. He's a lovely man. Um, yeah, what else to say? There's nothing really bad. <laughs> Even the screen is good. I'd normally criticize the screen on an adventure bike. I don't get any buffeting. The performance is insane. The handling is really biblically good for this type of bike. You could keep up with anything on this, and it just makes me sad that we can't currently go off to the Route Napoleon in the south of France for a couple of weeks and pull some really dodgy mingers over there. So yeah, the French are probably quite glad. But anyway, should you buy one? Yes. Would I have one over a BMW GS? Yes, because it suits my style of riding a lot more. The engine's a lot more exciting. It's just a thrilling bike and it can tear your face off and it can do the comfortable thing. I, I, GS, I don't know. I used to love the GS. I still do love the GS, but this has just pipped it to be one of my favorite bikes of all time. I wish I wasn't just repeating what everyone else has said, but hey, it's true. Go and buy one, go and ride one, even if you're not into adventure bikes, give it a go. Broaden your horizons, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Please hit my bell, like, comment, subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Sorry it's been a bit waffly, but there's a lot to cover. Goodbye. I'm going to go and ride some more. Home. In a socially distanced manner.